Hi everybody, welcome to TIA Now, I'm Clarence Reynolds. Mobile World Congress is the place where exciting announcements are made, and this year is no exception. JMA Wireless just announced its new XRAN adaptive baseband platform. XRAN is the first virtualized RAN built as 100% software, and JMA's corporate VP of product and market strategy, Todd Landry, is here to tell us about it. But first, let's learn a little bit about JMA Wireless, thank you for being with us, Todd. Yeah, so good to be with you today. So tell us a little bit about JMA. Yeah, absolutely. So JMA is a, a company that's a global innovator of technology. Uh, we're well known for many large buildings, uh, campus environments, outdoor connectivity, uh, probably known also for a lot of the largest uh, stadiums and professional sports environments in the world. Uh, our focus is on core innovation of technology. We have a lot of developers around the world and manufacturing expertise to really control delivery of that technology to our customers. So tell us about the big announcement. XRAN is huge. It is huge, it is huge. And it's, uh, it's been a lot of work with, uh, under development for many years for us. Uh, a lot of it has been focused on changing the game for what we deliver and capabilities for delivering wireless. So um, XRAN announcement today is, or as you said, around adaptive baseband. And nowhere in the industry has anybody really cracked the nut of solving all layers of baseband technology in 100% software. Uh, importance of that, of course, is to change the market and start to move it into the era of cloud economics, right? Really simplifying what it takes to deploy and, and, and thinking about what happens in the cloud, but now in the mobile infrastructure. Are there any deployments right now of XBand? There are. Uh, one of the important parts of our announcement was to not only get the product to its mature state of capabilities, uh, but also to get it into a live network. So we were very, very happy to be collaborating with the CTO organization of Telecom Italia Mobile. Uh, we have a live network running in the center of Bologna right now that has gone very, very successful. So we're really, of course, pleased about that. And that was a secondary announcement we made today at Mobile World Congress. A lot of people are, are always wondering what the motivation is. What, what led down the path, to the path of, of X-Band for JMA? Yeah, it's a good question. Well, you know, one of the things we looked at strategically was we were in the access side of the networks with our distributed antenna system, uh, and we were growing that business quite successfully. We've become the number one, uh, number three player in the overall marketplace, and you know, really number one in growth in the U.S. market. And as you look at it strategically to, to really grow the business towards 5G in those in highly densified environments, you really need to go up the protocol stack and provide more intelligence to these sites. So to do that, the best thing to do is to develop the baseband technology and, and make it t more tightly integrated with the DAS platform. To do that though, it didn't make sense to build it in the old way, right? The, the, the firmware way or a hardware oriented way where everything is stranded. Uh, and so instead we made the investment to do that in fully virtualized software. That is the fundamental game sh uh, shifter that we've done right here. JMA recently made another big announcement. Tell me about the smart cell platform. Oh, indeed. So smart cities is a, is a big initiative in our industry and in almost any city in the world we're trying to evolve towards better connectivity for all the patrons of the city. In fact, we're very much involved now with TIA and their Smart Cities Initiative, a very, very important initiative for us to help drive consistency and drive standardization of an approach uh, for smart cities. Um, with Smart Cell, what we really did is we took our antenna technology, our, our connectivity technology, uh, all our radio technology, and we started to define a more integrated approach that streamlines the solution for cities. Naturally, cities don't like wires and cables and antennas hanging everywhere, so they really want this stuff to d disappear and make their city beautiful. And you know, really recognizing that from our perspective and bringing that to the table to change the game for cities so they had a, you know, better connectivity for the people in the city and it disappeared into the city infrastructure. So Todd, what is your vision for the future of smart cities? Well, for the future of smart cities, I think the key thing we're looking at is uh, a range of connectivity, not just for humans, but for a mass number of devices. Um, the other big thing you will know about cities is that if you are in, a, in the, the canyons of a city, things like GPS don't work as well as it, and today location has become very important for anybody moving around a city. So when you look at Internet of Things, when you look at converging 
technology into condensed platforms, increasing the capacity so I can get significant capacity in my mobile device while I'm there, and in ignite all kinds of sensory and location intelligence so that the ecosystem, uh, not only for the patrons, but for all of the people who service the community within the city streets, come together as a tighter ecosystem. This is a very powerful piece, which is why we're so focused on it. We're so glad to have you with us today. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for coming by, I appreciate it.